Hi, Sandy. How are you? Hi, Donna. I am fabulous. How about you? I'm good. Hello, good. everybody. Today, I Hello. want to introduce Sandy Trebenbach. She is a professional who does some code work and her company's name is all about your wellness. So today we're gonna to be talking about Lyme's, Lyme's disease and we're getting ready to go to springtime, which you know is tick time. So this would be perfect. So Sandy, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? I am the practitioner of It's All About Your Wellness. Um, I am um, a former sufferer of Lyme disease. And with the program that I do, um, I, I learned it firsthand how it works as a client. And then I was able to work with the program as an employee in advanced cell training and, um, and got to know it on that angle and what, how it can be helpful for other people. And, um, and now I'm using that program to help others um, conquer their fight with Lyme. Um, it's a very debilitating, horrible disease that yeah. doesn't seem to have a lot of, um, a lot of success. Yeah. Of I, have a, I have a friend who was, um, just tired and weak and he, he was like a workaholic kind of guy. And then he just didn't want to, he just couldn't, he just didn't have the energy to do anything. And he suffered with that for a long time. And finally he became his own doctor because nobody could give him an answer what was going on. And he started internet searching and finally got um, some testing done for Lyme disease. And that's what it was, but it was so many years later. And I know statistically speaking, really you wanna catch the Lyme right when it happens because like that's the best cure rate for it. And unfortunately only about 25% of the people get caught that in, in the acute phase. So speak to like the longevity or what your healing practices or. Well, first of all, if you get bit with a tick, let's go there first. Yeah. When you find you've been bitten with a tick and you discover that tick, you want to remove the tick, but you have 72 hours in before, if it, that tick is carrying Lyme, you have 72 hours to work with that bite. First, you put peroxide on it and you treat the area to kill all the, any bacteria that's on the surface. Mm -hmm. And then you um, either have three days worth of antibiotics in your possession or you get someone that does. Um, antibiotics have three, three days before to work in the bloodstream before the bacteria of Lyme leaves the bloodstream and starts finding its way through the body and all the white areas of the body and starts becoming that chronic Lyme disease that um, is, is more untouchable with yeah, our medical so it was, community. It was really interesting. I went to um, one of the functional medicine forums and they were talking about Lyme disease and how prevalent it is. And their recommendation was to put the, put the tick in a cup and take it to your provider and have it sent for analysis. And it's funny because my then that same year my husband got bit by a, a tick and I put the tick in a cup and I'm like, I'm taking this to the office and I'm gonna get this. And then I never did because I kind of I don't know, I don't know why I didn't, but like I should have because I learned that that's the right thing to do. There's also other ways to test. I mean, in the process that I use, uh, we use a lot of muscle testing. Uh -huh. And we also use the thymus when we tap our thymus. And what you can do with that tick is put it in a plastic bag. And when you come to me, for example, <laughs> then have the codes. Uh, you can tap that tick on your thymus and your body knows what that tick has and what's, what it's carrying and what it needs to heal from whatever that thing brought to the, to, to the body. Mm -hmm. um, so there are other ways to test. Um, but put that tick in a freezer, you know, preserve that tick. And, uh, and Ooh. then you can, you know, <laughs> but you know what, it's, it's, it works, you know, at least you've preserved it. It's not going to get away. You're not going to forget about it. It's going to be all dried up and ugly. It's, it's, um, it's a good way to preserve that thing until you can get it to your doctor and get it sent on to be tested. Yeah. It's like, who, nobody thinks about that when they get tick. I remember taking a tick bite that like, I, I have fear of nothing, but I am grossed out by ticks because then they get that big bulb of blood. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, oh, I, I know it's yeah. pretty gross. <laughs> yeah. So to but to put that in my freezer, I'd be like, oh, 
No. Well, was it engorged when you pulled it off? Was it engorged yeah. with blood? It was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so sorry. Hide it. Wrap it in something and hide it. Yeah. <laughs> and and label it really well. They're sneaky little <laughs> things. Like they don't want to come they out. Are. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what happens with people? Like, how do you um how do you work with them? So like, I think part of the problem, and, and you are probably know, know more about this than I do, but once they get past that window of treatment, it becomes more of a chronic disease. It does. And then there is the treatment for, it becomes a little more murky. Is that right? Yes, it does. There, I'm finding a lot of ways to heal a lot of things. Our medical community is a great medical community. Don't get me wrong when I start talking differently here, but they do not have the tools to deal with Lyme disease successfully. You had, by the time that 72 hour window is passed, the, the Lyme has already moved into the white areas of the body, which is your fat, your, your joints, your, your, any fluids that you have that don't have blood in them hmm. can, is starts containing that Lyme disease. Anything that we take by mouth or IV, the only transport system in the body is our bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And if you got fat that doesn't have blood in it, it, it missed the boat, <laughs> so to speak. It doesn't get to where you are wanting well, it to go. Hiding. You're, it's hiding. You're saying it's hiding. It's hiding. It lives in other places than, than where it can go. The thing with Lyme disease as well, it also reproduces very quickly. And it mutates with everything that's in your body. And so it becomes a real beast, shall I say, in that the body does not recognize it. All the frequencies of that Lyme have mutated and it has a frequency that the body itself doesn't recognize it as something to fight. Mm. And so that's where our program comes in. We have code sets that are specifically used for Lyme disease. And the way they were gotten was through muscle testing and the body being asked, what do you need to heal? So could you, could you speak a little bit to muscle testing? Because probably a lot of people don't even know what that is. Muscle testing is a communication with your body. We're all energy beings. Mm -hmm. And so muscle testing is a form of uh, communicating with that through the energy that we have. We are doing more talking than just verbally. Right. Our bodies are communicating. And so through all sorts of ways that our communication systems are now, that energy travels along all of those pathways. And so muscle testing is just asking the right questions. Like you, Donna, I would ask, uh, say you had, say your joints were really stiff today, okay? And um, I would ask, um, you know, why, what would be the reasons for, for your, your joints to be stiff? Is it the moon changing? I'm getting a yes on that. Um, is it, is it Lyme disease? Is it a pathogen? And I'm getting no's on those. But if you get something that's correct, like your name is Donna, is, is this Donna? I'm getting a yes. Okay. Am I Sandy? Yes. Am I Susan? No. Okay. That's how muscle testing is. And it's yeah. all about the questions that you ask. I and like, so I like the one where you stand up mm -hmm. and you just, you do like a sway test. Mm -hmm. um, like that's super easy when you're doing something and you, you just kind of, so yes, for me is forward and back for me is no. So like, sometimes I'll, I just to practice, I'll be like, should I go right or should I go left? And then I'll try to, <laughs> you know, just because I want to play around with the energy a little yeah. bit, but it yeah. really is, I, I use it for a lot of other things too. I, and I do it on my wrist or my arm and I do yes. Yep. No. So there's people that just use one finger, you know, I it either like falls off too. or it doesn't, you know? Yeah. I still have to work with that one. Yeah. And it's also, if your net, if your nail gets sticky or if it's smooth, you know, um, yeah. I haven't figured out that one yet, but, uh, yeah, there's pendulums you can use. Yeah. I love my um, pendulum. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just getting used to uh, thinking about, I think I might need to try one of those too. Um, it sounds so very rose cord, just cause we're talking about the rose quartz pendulums are kind of some of the best ones. There's so many different kinds, but the rose quartz is the one that seems to work the best when you're doing pendulums. Rose I will keep that in mind and look for that because I had a friend who did some muscle testing for me and she used a pendulum. And the question she asked was, 
Am I talking to Sandy? And the pendulum moved like it's supposed to. And then the question I really wanted it asked was, it was a set of codes that I needed for me. And when it's for me, you're vested in that answer. And so it's never a good answer. Yeah. But she tested that set of codes and the pendulum went absolutely wild. I mean, it, she said, it definitely, you definitely want that code, that set of codes. And so um, I'm, I'm really thinking it's a good idea. So speaking to the um, muscle testing, talk about what a code is. A code. I have a picture of a code. Okay, good. Um, I have pictures. Sets of codes uh, usually come in about 10 to 12 pages. Okay. Uh, first of all, when you're reading a set of codes, there's an intention page. It's like, I intend to change my cellular behavior. And really that intention is all about telling your body what you want done with what you're reading. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you read the page, you read the set of codes. And then you listen to an hour long of Pavlovian repetitive music, which helps absorb those codes. And then yeah. after that, there's a set. It's, it's a set. And the set is a small prayer that just helps the body remember what you read. And then you wait within a 20 hour period of, of time, uh, you, you listen to the music again. And that's the process. The body goes from there and starts targeting everything that's in that set of codes. Um, you had a question? Yeah, I was gonna ask, um, so that you have a set of codes and then you listen to certain music. Mm -hmm. That music is that biurinal beats? Um, no, it's, um, it's just a very repetitive, soft guitar music. It really is. The only reason we have this piece of music you could use Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for that matter, <laughs> but it's copyrighted. <laughs> and so anything that's not copyrighted probably could be used if, if you wanted to, to um, uh, make that work for you. Because we well, so are they re that... remembering the patterns of, of the code while they're listening to the music? It's all about your subconscious brain. You, you don't have to be actively listening to the music, but your subconscious brain is. Yeah, um, that's I do. I do hypnosis, so I really believe in that working with the subconscious part yeah. of the brain. I also know that um, music affects both sides of the brain, mm -hmm. which means that you're more synchronized. Um, you know, like when you lift your left hand, it's your your, your right, right hand, brain. your left brain, <laughs> vice versa. So when you have music on, it's like the whole brain is like on fire, and it's like receiving and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It works. It's, it's um, the program has worked very well, but this is just a page of, of a set of codes that I wanted you to, to see. Okay. It's just an assortment of letters and numbers and punctuation and the body, when you read it, uh, turns it into a frequency it can understand. Hmm. How does okay? it do that? Um, it's how our body is. <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, so when that question is asked, I, I, um, it, I don't know if you know how to read music or not, Donna. No, I don't. But okay. So when you're looking at a sheet of music, you're looking at lines and dots and flags and all sorts of whatnot that to you means absolutely nothing. Okay. Yeah. But when someone who knows how to read music sits down to that sheet of music and turns it into what the sound is like, what it sounds like, then you understand what that music is all about. Hmm. We look at, we read this, this sheet of codes and we too have no clue what it is we're reading actually, but the subconscious part of the brain does. And as we're reading it, that frequency changes. And so it understands what we're reading. So is, and, is it an hour long session? Actually, the codes themselves can take like 10 to 15 minutes to read. Um, you can scan the codes. Our eyes are like cameras. And everything that we look at goes to that part of the brain. And it just, it just takes like, like pictures. Um, you don't have to read it word for word, letter for letter, number for number. You can kind of just scan it. Hmm. I do it all the way the wrong way. I read everything. <laughs> that's the only way I do it. Um, I didn't realize for many years that's how I do it wrong. But it works nonetheless. Um, this program is very forgiving, I'm finding. You can do it. A lot of different ways, the wrong way, not the usual way it's intended, but it still works. <laughs> it's very forgiving in that respect. So it's very easy to do. We have children that do these, these codes. Um, if they're old enough to read, 
they can do their own codes and do their own their own work and it it works very well for them as well hmm. um yeah it's just it's all about the brain and it's all about the intelligence of our bodies and our you know and we don't give them enough we don't give our bodies enough credit for how intelligent we are no we and don't it, yeah and so sometimes when we're talking about things like that it doesn't it doesn't really comprehend to someone who is ill right who has had those blocks um you know when or they have brain fog they can't remember they can't understand what they're supposed to be doing and then we then i personally take them through it and and help them get could through those us, codes could you give us an example of a patient that you work with and how it went and um, yeah. Um, do you want it Lyme disease or do you want it um, something else? Whatever. Um, well, take me for example. Okay. I, I, I used to be a, a client. Um, when I first came to advanced cell training as a client, I literally could not get out of bed very easily. I couldn't walk away from my bed. My mobility was such that I struggled to walk. Um, I had brain fog. I couldn't finish a sentence to save my soul. So conversation was kind of interesting. And um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about too, I used to swim all the time. Before I got bit with a tick, I would do 72 laps in a pool three times a week. Hmm. After I got bit with a tick and went through some emotional stuff where the Lyme's disease started getting really ramped up, I got cut down to six laps and could hardly drag myself out of the pool. Wow. That's, that's the changes that Lyme disease can make in a body. How did you, in a, a how did you get the, the diagnosis of Lyme disease? Cause I know that's pretty hard too. Well, what happened with me is I had four symptoms that would flare up in a cycle sort of thing and not knowing what was causing it. I'd end up in ER. I was a frequent flyer to ER with flu-like symptoms, high fever, bladder infections, tremors like none other. I could hardly contain myself. I was shaking so much. Mm. And it would always happen at a time when there was no doctor around. So ER was my place of landing. Yeah. And they didn't know it was causing any trouble. They did all sorts of tests. They all came back fine. Um, I did have bladder infections. I would get some antibiotics for that sent home and be sent home. And within a week, I'd be better, be calmed down and be okay. About six to seven weeks later, it would happen again. I was seeing a natural path at the time. And when she started looking at all of my symptoms and the frequency and the thing that nobody could really figure out what it was, she said, I wonder if you don't have Lyme disease. There really wasn't any certified testing done um it was just all on a hunch well but i was so excited to have a name for what i was going through yeah. um i actually had something feel, wrong with me yeah especially when you feel so awful it was horrible i mean i would lose work time um i still maintained a full-time job but thankfully i had people i worked for that were understanding that something was going on because that wasn't me mm -hmm. and they hung in with me um, but I would, I would do my eight hour shift and get home and land in whatever chair caught me. Hmm. And that's where I stayed. You know, life was pretty, pretty sedentary. <laughs> I yeah. didn't do much except just try and survive. And so after Lyme was in the conversation, I had a friend who was working with the advanced cell training codes. And she said, Sandy, Lyme disease isn't as detrimental as it as it can be there are ways to take care of it and so she told me about the process of what advanced cell training does with the frequency codes it still took me another three months to really figure out that that might be a direction i wanted to go um i thought well i'm working with some protocols for my wellness professional and i'm on some supplements and i've got these antibiotics you know how bad could it be you know but i was suddenly sliding down that really slippery slope yeah and needed to change it up and so i made the call and started on codes and within two weeks i started noticing uh, a lot more easy easy mobility 
my walking was a lot better. Hmm. And um, I started noticing a lot of improvement in the brain fog. I finally could carry on conversations. <laughs> that was amazing. And it's just like you wake up one morning and it's going, hey, something's missing. You know, it's like it was gone. Um, and, and so your body, you know, when you start targeting those things and you start telling your body what it needs to look for mm -hmm. and help it recognize what it's looking for, it does have the ability to do what you need it to do. And we have a very good success rate with Lyme disease and a lot of other um, illnesses, um, especially pathogen things. Yeah. Um, pathogens are hard to kill, especially viruses. Yeah. Um, Epstein-Barr, herpes, you know, all of those things. We got codes. The body can kill those things. Huh. And also with the coronavirus that's going around, we do have codes for that as well um, that have been helping people recover mm. um, after we've done the codes for them. You can also intentionally do these codes for family members um, or for people with permission. Right. Um, huh. You know, so... But that intent is so extremely powerful and what allows us to help other people out with when they can't do them themselves. So the advanced cell training, explain that a little bit. Advanced cell training was a business, okay? It still is to some extent. Gary Blyer was the founder of advanced cell training, was um, the office of advanced cell training was in um, Rhode Island. And my little remote office is in Minnesota and we work together, you know, the internet does some great things. Mm -hmm. um, I went to go visit, you know, a couple of times because I wanted to see these people. I always heard their voice and I wanted to meet them and I just wanted to connect in a better way. And I went a couple of times and then Gary starts saying, well, what do you think about Facebook? And all of a sudden I'm moderating their Facebook page mm -hmm. and uh, and then we started with Q and A phone calls and did those every Monday night. We did Q and A phone calls, and I started doing the Q and A phone calls by myself. And um, I got to do part of the the marketing and sales part of their their program. Gary, um, a couple of years ago, uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Um, had he has a he had he was working with a brain tumor. Hmm. And I always thought there would be something coming because codes needed to be written for cancer and we needed to do more work with cancer. More and more people were coming to us for cancer. Yeah. We're finding that cancer is basically a huge emotional illness where the, the body is, is, um, is uh, producing physical symptoms for. And... Um, Gary now these days is um, so far beyond what any doctor would have given him hope for. His doctors are dancing down the halls because his tests are coming back. And it's all through muscle testing, asking the body what it needs to heal, how it needs, you know, what it needs to be, to be provided to heal. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And um, the right protocols, the right medications, the right, you know, and all of those things are muscle tested. And those are things everybody can do. Uh, yeah. You know, all you have to do is ask your body what it needs, and then provide that and uh, keep supporting your body in whatever modality, whatever, whatever way you feel is right to use. Um, ask your body because it knows what it needs and it never forgets. It never forgets past traumas. It never forgets those things. Yeah, I would, I would love to see them doing the muscle testing and the advanced cell training for patients that are being treated for cancer, because okay. I feel like as a group of individuals, um, the word in and of itself is like, oh my God, you know, and I think it's hopeless. Like you hear the word and it's just hopeless and yeah. it shouldn't be. Because I feel like we have come to a place that between medicine and spiritual work and energy work and um, hypnosis and all those different kinds of modalities, we could actually be living with cancer as a chronic disease versus dying from it and dying in exactly. despair. So yeah. it's nice that you're talking about his cancer and that he's trying to develop codes for that because the medicine only does so much. And 
you know, people don't want to be denied the medicine to treat cancer. Mm -hmm. And so there needs to be more of this while you're doing cancer, you know, maybe you're doing IV vitamin C, maybe you're doing the healing code, maybe you're doing this advanced training codes, you know, like you're doing this whole, whole protocol that is not just medication driven, but symptom relief too. I mean, think mm -hmm. about how many people have cancer are nauseated, their hair is falling out, they can't get out of bed. And wouldn't all these healing codes and the codes that you're using be something that would help abate some of those side effects? Yeah. Yeah. There, there are so many of our chronic illnesses that are emotionally related mm -hmm. and, and it's just the body calling our attention to what we need to fix. You know, it's a whole, a whole gamut. And yeah. there are so many ways that it can all work together. Um, there's so many things that we can put together and mm -hmm. work together as a team rather than just being afraid of the illness, being mm -hmm. afraid, you know, work with the symptoms. Yeah. We are a system-based um, product with advanced cell training. We work with the symptoms. We don't necessarily work with diagnosis um, because, you know, just because you have, you know, Lyme disease, for example, doesn't mean you can't walk. Doesn't mean that, you know, you've got pains, you've got joint pains, you've got night pain, you've got, you know, we work with that sort of thing rather than just the Lyme, you know, and it's all about the symptoms because yeah. that's what you have to live with. Mm -hmm. you know? and I do find, as you said, you know, as a nurse practitioner, that a lot of these diseases have some kind of underlying emotion. Um, there's a really good book. It's the ailments, ailments of emotions and diseases. And you can actually look up, you know, like if you go to the diabetic page, um, it talks about diabetes and sugar and not feeling sweet. I mean, it just has like this whole description of what the emotional component is, just like Lyme's disease would have an emotional component. Um, and then working with that, I mean, you're still going to go to somebody for your diabetes. You're not going to let you medicine, but right. then you could be doing some of these advanced cell codes, right? Mm -hmm. Like that would be helpful. Yep. It's all helpful. Advanced cell, the, the codes, the frequency codes kind of go hand in hand with a lot of the work that's being done. Um, it, it also can help the body more, be more accepting of what other things are being done. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they, it, it just can be, it can be working together better, you know, and, yeah. and, uh, you know, any modality really is not the end all, you know, it's, it's not the only thing out there that may work. There are other things and it's all about researching and doing your research and learning about stuff and asking your body what it needs rather than just, oh, I think I want to try this. Ask your body first. You can maybe save a lot of, a lot of time and trouble and money. <laughs> yeah. I just saw a patient last week and I was teaching her that like, okay, now you go home and you test all your supplements and see if those are right for you. And, um, because the energy stuff, we don't talk, I don't think we talk enough about the energy work. Um, no, we don't. what really got you interested in the energy work? Um, I had a friend that was doing emotion code and I was a Guinea pig once. And oh. it did such, it did amazing work. It, it took away pain I was living with. That was stuff that wasn't even me. It was something else. And um, that kind of piqued my interest. And then as I got working more with, with this person and really feeling the effects of what energy work is all about. And I have other friends that do stuff, but what we're doing now currently, what I'm, what we're currently becoming certified in is a whole different part of energy work I've never experienced before. And the, the effects of it and the benefits of it are just amazing. Hmm. Um, just, what's, the, what's the name of that? Um, it's the quantum key method nice. by with Melissa Zofsky and, um, I would have, I wasn't ready for that sort of energy work way back when, when I was really sick with Lyme, because mm -hmm. all I could think about was trying to take a step, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've yeah. moved on and yeah. um, it, it's, it's so cool to really witness how our bodies can heal to how our bodies can really feel on, on really super great days. Mm -hmm. And there's more and more all the time. Yeah. And um yeah, it, it's, 
it's an amazing place to be in when your body is feeling awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it should be. I mean, it should, it should be. And when this it is how we're created. Yeah. And <laughs> when is it isn't, we... it's a symptom of something else. Yeah. 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 So it sounds like it's a really, a, an awesome treatment plan. It is it's working with energy and people can take some of the work home with them and do it at home. It can all be done remotely. The majority of my, well, all but one client that I have, I work over the phone or the internet. Nice. Um, I only have one person that comes to my, my home and we work one-on-one, -on -one, but we're good friends. So it's our way to get together. Yeah. Uh, but everything else is done over the phone, over the internet, over Zoom, the computer. Um, I, have, I have a client that's in Ireland, you know, in Ireland, and there's one in France I used to work with. And uh, the time change is our biggest challenge in that respect. But, you know, it, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's doable. That's a small, small little hurdle. Yeah. Um, it's all about getting them better. It's all about helping them reclaim their life back and their health and uh, being able to enjoy their life again. Yeah, I like, I'm going to write that down. Reclaim your health back. That's a good one. Yeah. So is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, oh, just that, you know, give me a call if you feel you want to. It's all about your wellness. And um, I also have a landing page. It's uh, bookme.name slash Sandy T. Bookme.name. N-A-M-E uh -huh. slash Sandy T. Yeah, I'll try to post that when I post that. Yeah, has a lot of information about Lyme disease and what advanced health training is all about. And it also has the little things where you can do a clarity call, <laughs> but include your phone number because that kind of got missed somewhere along the line. Um, include, include your phone number. <laughs> do you so want people can... to have your phone number? My phone number, yes, is 320. Oops, hold on a minute. I thought I turned that off. <laughs> Surprise. I know. <laughs> Back at the top, 320-219-1770. Okay, and, always um, say it twice because I'm always that person that goes, what was that again? Okay, 320-219-219. 1770. Perfect. Yeah. And the cool thing is I'm at home as a full-time practitioner these days. So there's no more uh, job to get in the way of my schedule. And uh, that's been pretty cool too. Yes. It was divinely, divinely yes. planned out, wasn't it? It was, it was, <laughs> it was cool. Yep. It's, it's not such a bad thing to be called in the office and said, oh, we're, we're laying off 15 people and you're one of them. <laughs> and I, I sat there and I went, oh, okay. Well, okay, God, this is this day. Yeah. I've been preparing your plan, your plan, His plan was for something better. Much better. Yes, it was. I, nice. I don't think you can ever go wrong working in the field of health and healing. You're just, exactly. there isn't anything better than helping people. It's an amazing place to be and an amazing place to witness how the body heals. It's, it's so cool. I was just a quick story. I had this client who came to me, her sister um, brought her to me, not physically, but over the phone. She was in the hospital. She had just had a lung transplant and um, she had a hole in her heart. And during the lung transplant, they repaired the heart, okay? Well, I got to come in on the story when her stomach and intestines were shutting down and her sister is saying, can you help us? And so I muscle tested, we got some codes, they're shock and trauma codes. And um, she, four days later, was able to start coming home. She wow. made trips back and forth, but now that was in April, this is now, and she's now at home. Uh, has passed all of her tests, um, is on the lowest dose of prednisone possible wow. for anti-rejection. And um, that's what the body can do when it heals. And that's to be able to cool. see those things firsthand. Um, and it's not me. I am just the conduit, you know. Um, God's miracles. God's miracles. God works those miracles 
And to be able to witness that and say, wow, and just, um, just be in awe, you know, is, is, is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. That's a great story. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. We have Sandy Tree Benbach, and she is at All About Your Wellness. So if you need more information, look her up. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Donna. It was wonderful Bye, being with you today. Same here. And again, that is the ACT codes. Correct. correct? Okay. Correct. There you go. Bye. Bye-bye.